Hello, and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench, we have some more Q&A from a viewer of the channel. Um, essentially, we're going to take a deeper look into the front end of a scope. In this case, I have a 7000 series plug-in on the bench, the venerable 70 or 7A26. Uh, however, the front end is very similar in any of the 400 series scopes, the well, any of the 7,000 series scopes. Um, a lot of techniques were necessary and were duplicated. The parts vary a little bit, but the thought process was the same. Um, going back to the 500 series, uh, the front ends kind of worked the same way. The architecture was a little different, but given some pesky physics problems... Uh, tech got it right, and they just kept doing it, which was actually pretty good. The 7A26 was probably one of the most popular plugins ever made, or was the most popular plugin ever made, with over 120,000 units manufactured of just this plugin. So, incredibly, incredibly popular unit. And it's the fastest amplifier in the 7000 series, that is one mega ohm. There are faster amplifiers, but they're 50 ohm, and they take some different equipment to get running. This takes straight old probes, which is good. I believe the uh, question came off of a 400 series scope. This would be the 700 series equivalent of the vertical section of that scope. A 700 series scope operates very, very similar to a 400 series scope except all the parts and pieces in a 400 series are smashed into one box where the 700 series has modules, the frame, the plug-in bays, and then the time base. The 400 series being portable had all of those pushed into one case. The fault was in the DC balance section of the scope, and I do some alignments and calibrations and things like that on these plug-ins, and I kind of cruise through that section um, which is slightly odd to calibrate, but I've never really talked much about it, hence why we're making this video, just to get some more information out there. If we take a look at the 7603, one of the ways the DC balance shows up is if we go into variable mode, one, the trace should not jump very far on the screen, uh, just to say it is this plug-in and it is this trace. The other thing is, as we... Ooh, that pot is, that pot needs a little bit of exercise and cleanup. It's kind of dirty. But th this is within spec. However, the DC balance on this does need to be adjusted a bit. So if I bring this up to the center line and I crank this all the way up, run this throughout its range, the trace moves a bit. doesn't move a lot, but it moves a bit. The Actually, this is within spec, but barely. Uh, the spec on this is half a division. So as long as the trace doesn't move more than half a division through its entire range, everything is within specification. This is a fundamental and adjustment based on how the front end of the amplifier is supposed to function. Let's take a look at the front end of one of these, look at some schematics, and see if we can't clarify what's really going on here. We will see if the giant roll of solder is a good backstop for this. Might be a little big. Nope, that's actually pretty perfect. All right, cool. Let's zoom in down here to the attenuator, and we'll take a closer look. Okay, here we are at the front end of a tech scope. We're going to pick on channel 2 for the simple fact of channel 2 is easier to get the covers off without tearing things too far apart. Channel 1, the covers can kind of be... A struggle to get off and then back on. Need a pointer tool for some of this because some of this stuff gets pretty fine. So from a physics standpoint, where we have a problem, if I pull out just a touch, we have the front end attenuator, the first FET, coupling transformer, and then stage one and stage two of amplification. Uh, this would be essentially... If I was up here, this would be U 1350 and 1450 as we move back. So the signal path comes in from the front, goes through the attenuator, hits the JFET, and then comes back out. Now, the reason it comes through the attenuator first 
is because this is a very wideband amplifier. And especially at the time, and even still today, making a variable gain wide, wideband amplifier is fairly difficult. So the way Tech got around this is they made an attenuator and then they made a fixed amplifier, fixed gain wideband amplifier. So that solved some problems and created some others. Uh, this section was, I would imagine, a lot of time was spent getting this attenuator section right. And even in the 400 series, hell, even in the 11A72s, they still use a step attenuator like this. It's a little, it's a little more complicated because it's digitally controlled. But the step attenuator was still used. Actually, HP used this quite a bit. In some of their RF gear, they would have a fixed output. And then if you needed less signal, they varied it a little bit. But then they had attenuator steps that would attenuate the output. So instead of having the signal come this way on some of the HP gear, it goes this way to the output. Um, so essentially worked just like the scope in reverse. And some of these techniques are still used today. So we have a unknown signal coming in from the probe where the first attenuator is actually right here because you have a 10x probe. So we're automatically taking one-tenth of the signal. Then we're driving it through an attenuator block and uh, conditioning the signal and then picking it up at this first JFET. Schematic-wise, this is what this looks like. So we have all the attenuator switches here. We even have attenuation resistors coming off of the tuning capacitors. These modules, I guess is a good term, uh, are the attenuators. So we have the uh, tuning capacitors. They couple with a resistor too. So these are RC dividers. Uh, so we have a 10x attenuator, a 5x attenuator, a 2x attenuator, and I believe on this one it's a 100x attenuator. So, so we have the 100x, 10x, 5x, and 2x, and depending on how the front end control is set, those attenuators will they'll be used in different ways. There's a very large uh, crib sheet. We can see the very top of that crib sheet here that um, essentially has the switch positions in it based on how the front control is set. You'll know what switches are up and what switches are down. In the question case of the unit, we do know that the unit had been overstressed. Really, because the attenuator networks first, this is going to take the brunt of an overstress. Overstress is never good on the port or anything like that, but it's got to come through this FET to get to this IC, 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 to to this IC all the way down the chain. And so it would have to be a very large overstress to blow through this FET, to blow through this IC, to then p blow through this IC, because there's a whole lot of resistor dividers and voltage setting and things like that that goes on, and also all these tuning sections, which is what you're adjusting when you do an alignment or a calibration. It is possible, if the overstress is high enough, that it could get through and damage some of these ICs. However, the tech hybrids are pretty well protected with the attenuator sitting on the front end. Um, I have seen attenuators where some of the coupling resistors, which are hiding down here in between, I'll zoom in on that. So you can just see one of the resistors peeking out right here next to the capacitor tuning. So I've seen one of those resistors burned in half before and the plug-in still functioned. Uh, the capacitor bank needed to be replaced, but once I replaced the resistor in the capacitor bank, everything was functioning normally. So the overstress is dependent on what's happened or what has happened and how fast and also how large that is. One of the reasons the balance is so important is because we start single-ended and at this transformer right here, we flip to a differential signaling. So this is a differential amp and this is a differential amp. And then we have diff differential signaling all the way through the chain, through the, um, even the delay lines differential in some of these scopes. So we have a plus minus. Uh, that does a couple of things. One, it lets, lets the amplifiers have a good common mode rejection. And two, it, um, 
also helps to stabilize some things. But as with op amps and a few other things, when you have differential signaling, you can have some balance problems. And especially when you're driving the signal right at a right at crossover, some weird things can happen. T1310 is going to be right here, this tiny, tiny transformer. So this tiny, tiny transformer is going to be T1301, sorry, not 1310. Now we do have our first balancing adjustment, which is the 2x balancing, which affects the 5 millivolt and 10 millivolt scale into this transformer. So what this potentiometer is adjusting is it's adjusting a DC level on one side of this transformer, this coupling transformer, to start the balancing chain, which will then feed into U1350. So taking a look at the schematic, this entire block is U1350. So this is the hybrid, the tech hybrid. Our signal's coming in here on, I believe it's, what pins? 16 and 14. Yes. So I would imagine we're setting up some biasing here, and then our actual signal comes in on 14 and 16 and then so we have our first differential differential amplification stage the second dc balance which actually affects the variable a little bit more is right here so the same thing we're doing in each one is we have our plus minus 15 volt rails feeding a 10k potentiometer at both ends so we get some form depending on how where this is set of dc that we can drive all the way over to plus 15 or all the way over to minus 15, which then we go through a current, current limiting resistor into the signal path. Now the bottom side is just straight. So there's no adjustment on the bottom side. It is what it is. The top side, we can add or subtract, depending, a DC level here that will balance out these two rails. And ideally, if it was perfectly balanced, these rails should have the exact same voltage on it and, it, and they should be very, very, very close. And they shouldn't. Uh, they should, uh, with them having the same DC level, that'll cancel out because it's differential. And only the signal will be left at the other amplifier. Now, the signaling is important and the balance is important between... U1350 and U1450 because U1350, which is this, actually it's from here to here, this whole schematic, this is all U1350. Uh, so from there to 1450, this is just signal. This is the first signal amplification stage. U1450 handles signal and positioning. So position sensor or the position control gets picked up after 1450 and then that gets injected. So that will bias the DC level for the next stage, but it's doing that based on positioning. So this should be as close to balanced as it can get, hence DC balance. So when making this adjustment and figuring out getting this lined up on the scope. This is kind of a wild adjustment to do because you don't adjust it all the way to the line. So in a unit that's functioning, the DC balance can put this into, sp into outer space um, and you can get a pretty high deviation out of it. The thing is, is when you put it to the center, and then you would roll up the control, it'll deviate to say up here. What you'll then do is you don't want to adjust it all the way back down to center. You want to adjust it halfway. The reason for the halfway adjustment is because it's adjusting both the positive and the negative. So when you turn it back, if you adjusted it all the way down to center, if you turn the variable all the way back down, it goes all the way back down here now. So you do it in half steps 
I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've aligned a plug in. Counterclockwise is the start. Clockwise is where it shifts. Oh, that's actually really good once it's warming up. Noisy, but it's staying much better at the graticule line than anything else. Although I need to fix that. Uh, that control's a little loose. So, with it being all the way counterclockwise, set the position to center, roll it completely clockwise, adjust it halfway to center, back it off counterclockwise, readjust position to center, roll it forward, adjust it halfway, and just walk it into, into alignment with those steps. That's the easiest way I've found to do that specific adjustment, both actually wherever it's asked for. Now, sometimes at the front end, because the um, 5 and 10 millivolts per division setting, it moves as well, a little bit. I don't bump the position control. But if I kick this down to 5 millivolts, it moved down about 0.2 divisions. Now we're back to center. So when doing that, it's just walking it in until it is within specification. This is assuming that the hybrid wasn't damaged by overstress. None of the resistors got damaged by overstress things like that overstress can be a pretty hard situation to troubleshoot because the damage can be very subtle sometimes and doesn't like showing up the dc balance adjustment too is so critical uh it is the first step in the calibration process of one of these plugins couldn't remember if it was the first or if it was a little bit later but it is prior to the gain setting all of the um all of the compensations, everything like that. So the DC balance, a plug-in or a vertical will not fully calibrate. It is very unlikely that a plug-in will calibrate if the DC balance is too far out of whack. So I hope that helps. I hope that sheds some light on how one of the front ends of these scopes work. And I hope we were able to clarify a few things. As always, if anybody has anything to add, hit it up in the comments section down below. I read, all, I read all the comments between videos, and I love talking with everybody. If you'd like additional content, take a look at the Patreon page. Patreons are running ahead of YouTube. But as of the recording of this video, currently nothing is behind the paywall. However, their support helps me bring videos to YouTube, helps keep the lights on here in the lab, and I am eternally grateful for all of their assistance. As always, more is always on the way. And I will see everybody in the next video. Bye for now.